Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast. And if you've been paying attention to early Kamigawa Neon Dynasty previews, you might have spotted this card, Satoru Umazawa. In addition to the throwback of being an Umazawa, a name which has shown up since Legends and gained quite the fame in last Kamigawa block, there's something else big returning here too, Ninjutsu. This fan favorite mechanic is quite tricky. And today, I'm going to tell you about four ways to use it that you probably didn't know about. To understand these loopholes, we need to take a look at exactly how ninjutsu works. Ninjutsu means this, cost, return an unblocked attacking creature you control to its owner's hand, colon, put this card onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. So a base case would look like this. I attack you with a creature, you don't block. I pay some mana and return it to my hand to activate my ninjutsu ability. Then when that ability resolves, I put my ninja onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Cool enough. But there's so much more you can do if you realize the intricacies of how this mechanic really works. First up is this, looping ninjutsu. Let's say you're back at the moment where you attack and your opponent doesn't block. You ninjutsu in a Skull Snatcher. Well, that Skull Snatcher is now still an unblocked attacking creature. So you can ninjutsu it. This means that let's say you have two Skull Snatchers in your hand. You can just return one to your hand and put the other into play for a black mana. And then you can do that as many times as you want for as much black mana as you have. Now on its own, this doesn't accomplish much, but with a Kindred Discovery, Impact Tremors, a Yara, or whatever other ability you have that triggers when a creature enters the battlefield, you can generate a lot of advantage. Second is Ending Ninjutsu. The combat phase is a little weird. First, you have Beginning of Combat, where people can do things before you attack. Then you have a place for you to declare attackers and have responses, they have a place to declare blockers and have responses, and it's right here, after they block, before combat damage, that you normally activate ninjutsu. But surprisingly, it's not the only place you can activate ninjutsu. There's another very sneaky place you can do it. There's a step called end of combat. It's there mostly for uh, activating desert or something, I guess. But the key here is this. A creature is still considered attacking as long as you're inside your combat phase. And that includes end of combat. So that means you can make the following play. You attack, they don't block. You let your creature deal the damage. Then, either in the combat damage step or at end of combat, you activate ninjutsu. This puts your ninja onto the battlefield tapped after combat damage. Why would you want to do this? Well, for one, you can then recast the creature you returned to have it untapped for blocking. But maybe you're about to sweep the board and you want it safely back in your hand. Maybe you dealt lethal damage with an Abyssal Persecutor and you need to get it off the table. Whatever the reason, this trick lets that creature deal the damage before it goes away. And it's particularly effective in combination with this third one, multiple ninjutsu. You attack with a few creatures, they don't block. You pay the ninjutsu cost of mana and returning a creature to your hand. But hold up, we're going to do something else. And here's the key. Returning the creature is part of the activation cost of the ability, everything before the colon. But you don't put the ninja onto the battlefield until the ability resolves. That means you can activate ninjutsu multiple times with a single ninja. So if I have three attacking creatures, I can actually pay a blue mana three times, reveal the same misplayed shinobi, and return them all to my hand, then put the shinobi onto the battlefield. This could be for any of the previous reasons, just on a larger scale. But the way I most often like to use this is in conjunction with the ending ninjutsu trick for saving creatures. Attack with everybody, let them deal damage, and then pull them all back to my hand with a single ninja right before I cast a board sweeper. Brilliant. 
And finally, one that is both practical and brutal. First Strike Ninjutsu. You attack with a First Strike creature. They don't block. You deal First Strike damage. Now here's where it gets tricky. You can pay the cost, return the First Striker to your hand, and Ninjutsu in your ninja, which doesn't have First Strike. Then, when you go to the rest of the combat damage step, the game says, hey, here's an attacker that doesn't have First Strike and didn't have it earlier, you get to deal combat damage too. This lets you double dip, dealing damage with both the first striking creature and the ninja. I'll take that. Ninjutsu is a weird mechanic and gets even weirder the more you dig into it. Hopefully, you can use these tips to your advantage and ninjutsu in some ways your opponent will never expect. Do you have a favorite ninjutsu trick I didn't mention here? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'll talk with you again on Monday. And until then, may you use your ninjas wisely. You got this. So it wants you to play big toughness commanders. Good with all those counters you're pumping out. Uh, wow, this card definitely looks like it's going to make games take a long time. Uh, thoughts yeah. on Ikra Shadiki? Wow, like, that's a lot of toughness. This thing is probably gonna hit your opponent and gain you seven. Like, yeah, like, 